In today's lesson on international trade, we're going to talk about the theory of comparative advantage. Okay, we have a hypothetical world where only two countries exist. Two countries creatively named A and B. Okay? And in these two countries, there are only two, two items, two products, ice cream and freezers. Strange world, but a cool world. Pardon the pun. Okay. In the course of a given day, if A were to focus all of its energies on ice cream, it could produce 80 barrels. Okay? B, focusing all of its attention on ice cream, produces 20. A, focusing on nothing but freezers, they can make 20 freezers in a day. B, can actually make as many freezers as it does ice cream. Well, of course, you need both, right? I mean, you can't have ice cream without freezers. Not for very long, anyway. Um, and so what they do is they divide their time. They divide their resources in the course of the day, meaning A is going to split the time evenly and spend half of its day on ice cream and half of its day on freezers. B is going to do the same. And then we take a look and you say, well, A has obviously has a, an absolute advantage over B in terms of the production of ice cream, and it's a tie when it comes to freezers. But when you dig a little deeper, you realize something. You say, hey, now wait a minute. For A to produce a freezer, they have to give up the production of four ice creams, right? Or the cost of a freezer is four ice creams, whereas for B to produce a freezer, they only give up one ice cream. So in those terms, B is actually the more efficient producer, substantially so, of freezers. Okay? Ah, so now we have an opportunity for trade, don't we? Because if A and B got together, and A realized, or they both realized that, you know what? B is a lot better at freezers, A is a lot better at ice cream, so if A just focuses all of its time on ice cream, be on freezers, then we can do some trade and both be better off in the process. See, because now A can actually give, let's say, 15 ice creams in exchange for 10 freezers. So the 15 from the 80 leaves them with 65 ice cream. This leaves them with 10 freezers. And at the end of the day, guess what? We're better off. Before we got together and before we traded, uh, a had 40 ice creams. Today it has 65, and it still has just as many freezers. Uh, B had 10 ice creams, it has 50% more, and it has just as many freezers as well. Folks, that is the beauty of international free trade. Okay? Now, on that topic, this morning I read an article in the New York Times that, that talked about solar panel manufacturers in China. Um, being accused by seven companies that manufacture solar panels here in the U.S. of uh, China subsidizing, they're, they're bringing it in cheap. U.S. consumers then can buy this Chinese product lots uh, or much less expensively than they can buy the, uh, the U.S. product. Uh, somehow that's a bad thing. It's a bad thing if one, you're one of the manufacturers. So they filed a case this Wednesday. And by the way, today is October 21st, 2011. It's a Friday. So the day before yesterday, they filed this case. And... Um, and, and they actually, the, the author of the article believes that they'll probably win, and there'll probably be tariffs placed on these solar panels uh, coming from China. Okay, here's the problem. Uh, Chinese manufacturers and, and certain U.S. companies ha have realized some comparative advantage because what's been happening is there are companies here in the U.S. that manufacture solar panel manufacturing equipment, and China's been buying a billion dollars worth of that a year from the U.S., They've also been buying a billion dollars worth of the raw materials that go into these solar panels from other U.S. companies. Uh, if we apply the tariff, China is, is ready to go to Germany and buy the, um, the solar panel equipment from Germany and, and therefore killing the business of those manufacturers here in the U.S. So folks, this is going to be another example of the government getting involved and picking winners and losers. Uh, they'll, they'll apply the tariffs. No doubt that'll be good for these seven manufacturers. Bad for the rest, these other manufacturers that I just mentioned, and also bad for the consumer because now they're paying more than they would than they were when the uh, when these advantages that each country had each country had to offer the other um, in terms of the manufacturing and the distribution of these solar panels. And in my next video, we're going to drill down even deeper on the whole tariff protectionism topic.
Thank you for watching. Hey, again, one more thing. I thought I, I thought I'd expand just a little bit on my on my comparative advantage presentation. Um, again, in in that particular example, A had a comparative advantage when it came to ice cream. B when it came to freezers. And again, by by combining their forces, they were able to produce more for both in terms of the ice cream. My uh, my parting comments on the solar panel issue with China. I thought, I thought I'd play devil's advocate a little bit just here for a second and, and, and talk about both arguments, both the protectionist argument and the free trader argument. Because again, I, I've given you the free trader argument and that is that if we tariff this product, it will create business for the selected American industry, if you will. It'll hurt the business, in my example, of the, of the firms that supply equipment and raw materials to China. Now the protectionists would jump in and say, you know, that, that's, that's not right because obviously the business is going to increase for these American producers, therefore the demand from them for raw materials and equipment over here will expand. So these companies will be fine, but instead of sending their stuff to China, they'll be keeping it here in the U.S. Well, the obvious argument uh, in rebuttal of that is, um, well, the tariff raises the price in China. Uh, to what the American producer can actually produce it at profitably, and uh, and therefore consumers are gonna you're gonna take consumers out of the market with this much higher price. So so the the end result is the world's gonna have fewer solar panels, or at least America is, because the people aren't gonna be able to afford as many as they would if we were still importing it from China. So while maybe they'll do, and certainly maybe they would do more business in the U.S., they're gonna do substantially less than they would with the Chinese company. And by the way, the tariff that we're looking at is over, is 100% or over 100%, so we're talking about doubling the price uh, if you wanted to buy the product from China. Now, um, now, another argument would be that, well, China could very well bring production into the U.S. and actually make solar panels here. In fact, I do believe they're looking at that. In fact, there is some of that going on already in the U.S. And the reason they would do that in the event of a, of a tariff is actually if they come to the U.S., they basically jump, jump over here, produce it here, and then sell it here. And, and in, that re, in that respect, they would be avoiding the tariff altogether. Now the uh, protectionists would say, well, then what are you whining about? Well, again, what the, what the free marketer, if so to speak, or the free market advocate would say is that, well, that's great, and that'll actually produce perhaps some, some U.S. jobs, albeit maybe blue-collar jobs, but jobs nonetheless. Uh, still, it's not the most efficient uh, place for them to provide the product. If, if, they, if it was, they'd be here already. If they jump over here because of government involvement, uh, it's better than them going to Germany and buying the equipment there and not supplying the U.S. at all. But still, it is, it is less uh, of a benefit than just free, open trade with China. Um, thanks again for watching it. Again, my next video, uh, we're really going to drill down on the whole tariff uh, topic. So I think, I think this will make more sense even after you watch the next one. Again, thank you for watching.